Okay, so um, I'm Carol McDonald, and this is Dana Todd, and we're discussing the exciting thing of data standards for 3D. <laughs> Woo! Okay. <laughs> So um, my background is I'm actually um, a manufacturing engineer, um, mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, and had 30 years of um, consumer products uh, experience in manufacturing. So if you need it to go from zero to 10,000, that's my area of expertise. And uh, this is Dana Todd, and I'll let her take it from here. Well, I'm going to add that the other thing that she's done, and we're going to really dig into this, and, and how I met Carol was... A few years back, I noticed that I was trying to, I was really frustrated with standards. I came from the tech side of the world. I spent 25 years building digital experiences, working with MarTech platforms, which is very data-driven, right? Data-driven advertising, data-driven decision-making, data, data, data. And so coming into the fashion industry, I was really perplexed by the complete and utter lack of standards here. I was just like, I just want to introduce this concept to me of uh, a noon stick. Anybody ever heard this? This is a true story. In America, once upon a time, every township had its own version of noon, which was a stick in the ground, and when it was overhead and it cast no shadow, that was officially noon. Well, you can imagine what that did to the railroads, trying to set timetables, and it ultimately created what we have now as our, our, our standard times, right? So if you look at a, a simple kind of thing in the fashion industry, fit models are noon sticks. Right? It's a completely arbitrary thing based on what township you're in, what brand you're in, what day of the week it was, what style. Like, there's, there are completely arbitrary pace of things throughout this system. So I'm going to dig into it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, my background is tech first, fashion second. For the last few years, I've been, five years now, we've been running a marketplace where everything is made to measure. There are no standard sizes on Belladonna.com. Last year, we've le leveraged what we've learned there to create an on-demand, made-to-measure supply chain. And that's about the time that I met Carol. So Carol's been running multiple working groups within the IEEE now since 2017. But you didn't know that there's stuff like that going on. We're going to tell you all about it. So standards exist everywhere. And what I'm going to say right now, we are not talking about size standards. No size 8 six standard, size small standard. We're not talking about that. So before everyone in here reacts to just like, no, don't take my proprietary grading chart, no. We're not talking about that. We're talking about approaching this with a scientific methodology and rigor that would, would approach any kind of standard. And standards are all around us. We literally don't even think about them every day. So just in this one simple photograph, we've got your phone. Your phone now works, you know, from cell tower to cell tower and state to state without incurring roaming charges and a whole lot of other things. You can use an Apple and an Android on the same system and no problem. Wouldn't happen without standards. It's an 802, it's an IEEE 802 standard. There you go, um, she knows You can go all. look it up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that your automobile itself even runs and can be assembled is because someone somewhere along the way decided that, you know, a, a 3 8 inch screw is a 3 8 inch screw and that's what... Metric. Well, whatever, you know, okay. what I mean. that's why she's the boss here. <laughs> broadcast, we have broadcast standards for, you know, for spectrum, right? All of these things exist, all, we take them for granted because they've been around for so long. And yet somehow, we've never really applied them to the fashion industry. So just looking at a few of the things that the, the body standards uh, working groups are working on are, is the avatar the same as the measurements? in the export file, because I can tell you, they're not in most of the scanners that you have out there. They don't, they don't match up. Should we measure your landmark of the shoulder in the skeleton for an H anim, right? If it's an animated for, they're gonna rig it on the skeleton. Well, guess what, for clothes, you might need it to incorporate a little bit of fatty tissue. Do we infer landmarks? Where do, we, where do those come from when the limbs are touching? And we have an amazing slide to show you how, you know, just how scanners view bodies and how they render them completely differently. What's the x-axis? Is it on the floor? Is it on the side? They don't even tell you. You have to guess. You have to pull it in a secondary. There's just all these little things. It's about communication. How did, we deter how did we determine the height on this avatar? Did we use metric and how far down did we go? Which waist? How many waists do you think there are officially? <laughs> When they first started, they had eight. Now we're down to four. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> 
are the extremities and postures actual or modeled? A lot of scanning systems actually swap your heads and hands and feet just because, right? <laughs> they, may not be, they may not be the same one because it anonymizes them and it saves time in rendering, right? How are the meshes and vertices? So we've got meshes that are triangles. We have messages, me meshes that are, that are quads. All of them yield different outcomes, but if you're not telling the receiver of the information on the other side what you did, where you did, how you did, then they don't know how to interpret it. And so standards are really just communication pro protocols, right? It's really just, you do your thing your way, I'll do my thing my way, but we're gonna make sure that we understand how we still get along and, and how our systems can work together. So yeah, ankles too. There's, there's billions of these, but... <laughs> um, so what you may not know is that, like I said, since 2017, we have been working on all kinds of things together. And there are four working groups now, is that right? Yeah, they're working on metadata, they're working on quality, they're working on use case, and then they're also working on the hardware software uh, portion of it as well. And if you have not, how many of you are actually IEEE members? How many of you know what IEEE is? Okay, there we right. go. <laughs> <laughs> so most people are like, well, that's for electrical engineers, it's not for me. Well, they are actually just really darn good at setting standards, right? Yeah, we're what standards they body. Yes. Do. <laughs> that's what they do. It's part of what you do. Exactly. Yes. And they have dedicated staff that help organizations like our working groups work with industry who don't even have to necessarily be members, who can all collaborate together to help to create standards that help everybody else get along. So um, you might anybody see the Kronos uh, group? thing yesterday, yeah. So we're actually, our teams are working with Kronos on, on HNM standards, uh, like that very important, where's your heel th piece, right? And you would not believe how long it takes for people to agree on something so simple as a landmark like that. And, but the good news is, is we've actually gotten a lot of momentum. So these are just some of the people who participate on the regular, every two weeks on most of the meetings, some two of them weeks, are working. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's a very active group, and that means it's about a great time for you guys to come in because a lot of the work's been done for you. You can just <laughs> come in and learn from it, but still participate it and, and still, we still have, have a voice. A quality whole. So anyway, we're going to get into quality, and you guys can help with that. And I'm going to give you a QR code at the end, but just to let you know what this is all about is to research, explore, and disseminate information specifically for the challenges that we're hitting in apparel, footwear, wearables, digitization, and the spillover, by the way. So it's not just clothes you wear, but clothes you wear in the metaverse, clothes you wear in, you know, in CGI. So anything that affects the human body related to an external environment or a component, we're focused around those body standards and creating information that can be transferred and methodologies for doing so, for sharing. So, and again, of course, we really want to enable the use and adoption, and that's why we're here today. So, in this year and to next year, our biggest paper to date is, we've, we've gotten the landmark study out. we got the, yes. We've got we the pose and posture study out. This one's going to be all about standards. The, the official standards. The official, it's gonna be the Bible, standard. right? Yes. So it's gonna be a big deal, and we're gonna need you to be part of that in some way, shape, or form. So, I'll hand this off to Carol now. Oh, okay, you click I, well, you I don't know, you can I'll still click. click. Okay. Just say click so, and I'll do it. All right, I'll try not to stare into the lights. Okay, so basically one of the first things we came up with was terminology. And what we found is we're a global um, industry which means English is not the first language for the majority of people working in this industry. So to help them out, we actually need to define terms and all be in agreement. So we broke it down into, the, we, we, have, we have avatars, we have digital clones, we have digital clones, blah, 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 blah. Okay, what are they? They're all humanoids. They are a model. You all in this room are humans. You eat, you need clothing, you've, you know, you've got families, whatever, right? A humanoid is your model. So that can be 3D, it can be a mannequin, it can be a list of data that says, here's your measurements, blah, blah, blah. It's all just a model. It does not require health insurance. So if you want to figure out how to divide it, it's really kind of simple. Now, Cover is what you're all wearing. And because 
you have attachments, right? This, is, this would be a cover. It's on the body. My footwear is on the body, right? Nothing's internal in this. It's all what's on the body. Watches. Yeah, so watches, you name it, accessories. We're going to put it under a big category. Oh, we're halfway through. I think we're, about, we're on six. We're good. Okay. So yeah. then, um, so that's a cover, okay? Now, if you have a model of it, it is a cover oid because oid actually means like, right? So it just means like. So, and then we actually have the interactions. So we call those uh, transformations. We have four assets in our entire environment. So when you take the data from the human, you now create a humanoid, right? So you go from a human to a humanoid. Some of these were like, well, those are kind of be in the future, but some of them we definitely know how to do. Now, you can also, now think about, the, your, your clothing is sized. That means your clothing relates to how big or small you are. Okay, so your humanoid is actually embedded within the coveroid because you have to have the garment to fit outside of you, right? If you can't put on what a two-year-old wears, I mean, it's not going to work, guys. And so, well, maybe they're, no, you can't. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm like, maybe they're sock, but I don't think so. So my point is that it's in actually embedded within the coveroid, and we never think that the human model is embedded in that pattern, right? So that's how we can say the, the, the humanoid impacts the coveroid, and actually I think, little, anyway, so we can see how they actually interact together. And that you can just kind of work around. You make a 3D model of a garment that you're then going to produce. Well, but while it's a model, it's still a coveroid. When it's produced, it's now a cover, and you're wearing it, and you're rather happy that you have your coat, right? Because you're now covered up, and so it's covered. So you can switch the sides. So how do... I mean, it's an ocean, people. Um, you've, got, you've got a... Part of it is you've got a wide bit of use cases. If I'm an AR, VR, and I'm making a gaming avatar, I don't really care if I'm correct on your waist measurement or on your hip measurement. I don't care. I don't need to care. But if I'm definitely making it for um, on-demand and made-to-measure garments, I care, right? So there's a whole range of use. So let's start simple. We have to start with communication, security, privacy, and trust. That means I have your personal data. How do I take care of that data? Um, communication means how do I take care of it in transit? You're like, transit? What does that mean? Oh, from one phone to the other phone. That's, your data is officially in transit. Who knew, right? So we have that one, and then we also have the quality. We're going to start with the simple one, metadata, which is basically that human-readable text at the beginning of every file. And then we have the quality, and then we have landmarking. Quality breaks down into multiple stages. You can click. Oops. OK, so communication, security, privacy, and trust. You've got PII, which is your personal identify information. Um, you have a recommendation that children should be, uh, have additional guidelines and requirements. There are other IEEE standards working on the rights of children. We actually have to reference those as well, because you have to make sure, for example, if you add a rig, you don't add the adult sexy woman rig when she's a 12-year-old, okay? You do not need to do that. <laughs> you need to understand, um, and that actually goes to words about how girl and woman is intertwined. Try to tell a computer the difference between a girl's night out and it's a 10-year-old girl. The computer's going, I am so confused. Yes, <laughs> we have gotten you confused. That is the goal. So we also have rights from GDPR, which is right of access, and how you actually handle that when you have modified an existing file with somebody's measurement, when do I become, where does the right of to be forgotten starts and ends? Okay, all of this is all really subtle and we have to go through. Next one here. So we have some metadata examples. You can form to our standard references, like what type of rig are you using when you're automating it? Is it a digital twin or a digital clone? 
Those mean distinctly different things. And which pose are you in? Which rig are you using? Is it normalized? Is the body area, are you only giving me a hand or are you giving me the whole body? And then also, you know, the title, you have to do it. The other thing we found is a lot of problem is there are four different ways of figuring out your CAD. It's a right hand rule, it's a left hand rule, and Y can be up or Z can be up. Now, there are four choices, four combinations. Everybody uses all different ones. But I just need to know, if you're doing a right-hand rule and I'm bringing it into a left-hand rule, just tell me what you've done so I can convert it over because it actually changes your mesh from being clockwise or counterclockwise generation. You're like way more detailed than I want to know. But for your tech guys, they go, oh, it's human readable. OK, now I know what to do. So we can. And external systems can read it, too. And external systems can read it. You know, I'm just like, just tell me. I don't care what you do, just tell me. Now, do you think this is the same person? Is it a trick question? <laughs> okay, the answer would be yes. We took four phone apps, and this was the models that we gave back. Now tell me, as apparel designers, can you make a garment for exactly? No. The answer is no. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So we need, from the scanning providers, the actual posture, we need the actual body shape, and we need to know, if you have a body rig, what, which one is it? Because it'll, the body rig will indicate whether you can actually do this, okay? Because most of the body rigs have one point here and one point here, but they don't allow you to roll your shoulders. I'm curious, well, like the inaccuracies in the past with 3D the fashion industry, is there a way we can like input things like body measurements, body fat percentage to be more specific on the outcome? That would be standards, dude. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Good segue, sorry. Um, so the answer is, uh, yes, we can bring in, but then how much manual data? And, and, and honest to God, I can tell you, put in your height. Now, if you're a male, you go, uh, I'm going to add an extra inch because I'm a guy, okay? If you're female, you tend to go, I'm not 150 pounds. No, I'm 135. Okay, but can I now make you a garment? Eh, no. <laughs> so, so how much do you truly, you know, on the phone... You gotta be honest. And the that's consumers are always honest. I know, honest, always <laughs> honest, always honest. So the, the key also is that we have to train consumers. We've trained consumers the following. Any garment I can get over me fits. Does it look good? Well, no. You know, from a trained eye, they go, oh, geez, okay. But you've trained cons consumers, if I can move, it fits, okay? That's all we've trained consumers on. We've also trained consumers that if I don't like it, it's not close enough, I can exchange it a gazillion times, okay? I mean, I can, you know, buy three, exchange two. We haven't, we haven't trained consumers to say, take a little extra time at the beginning, take three poses instead of just only, you know, side, okay, now do this, now, you know, so now I can make a garment because I know I'm standing up straight, I'm bending over. We need to train consumers why we need the information. We haven't trained them. We've just said, here, good luck, <laughs> pick what you want. So, um, and then next one. So now we have landmarking as well. So landmarking is, as you all figured out, we can't define what a hip is. We can't define, we, we got the landing point, right? Okay, we're on the heel, that's down here, so you can put on shoes. But could you actually take the waist measurement or the hip measurement from one brand to the next and bring that over for interoperability into any of your apparel CAD? The answer is probably no. Not right now. It's not right now. So. Can we set up a standard for the anchor points? From a design standpoint, you know, if, if you want your shoulder to land here, I don't care. I just want you to know, here's the shoulder of the body. Now do what you want, right? I mean, you've got to understand, 
I'm not telling you you can't do anything. I'm just telling you you know where the knee is. Here's the knee, right? I know where the thigh is. I know, now some of the providers will say, oh, well, they should have a thigh gap, even though when you stand and you're slightly heavier, you may or may not have a thigh gap right here. But I'm just going to make a thigh gap. Now I'm going to change that dimension of that leg to admit, no, I, I, I need to know the actual person. The answer is give me the person and I'll do what I need to do. So we need anchor points so that when you model it, you know where to attach it to the body, so when you're doing all that draping and soft physics, it interacts with the body correctly. So these are just some, you know, standards that we'd sure like help with. Okay, so. And there was a landmarking paper that we published two years ago. Yes, two years, two years ago. ago, so um, that segues into the, the, you know, open your minds, you know, help out. <laughs> okay, I, I think we're supposed to be soon to be finished, and then um, I think the next slide, you all I think have entertained you enough to open your mind. So we're on an IEEE website. This is the link down there. That's the UR, I don't know if you're, uh, Yeah, so the, the scan, it's the same thing, so the QR code. Um, and you can also if, hit up Carol to join the groups. Um, so you'll be onboarding, there's this separate, if, area called iMeet where papers and notes from the meetings are shared so you can read up on everything that's been done once you join up. If you are part of the industry connections group, you do not have to pay for an IEEE membership because if you're not, one, if you don't want to be a voting member, if you just want to contribute and participate, that's, that's better for us. Um, there is, so that page is actually super long. There's a whole lot of things on it. And one of those other things that is very critical. We, we ran it last year, but we're running it again. We have a survey asking people how they're interacting with 3D, what you're doing with it, any issues you've run into. We ran it last year and... What, 30% of people aren't even using 3D tech. You're like, yeah. I don't know how you're going to make it till 2025. Others use it and then just throw <laughs> it away when it comes to the factory, yes. right? So it's, there's, that was last year, so we'd love to have a larger, I think we only had about 50, 50 participants. Yes, so we want a larger data set, so please take the survey. It's very, very short. Um, that way we have a sense. Y'all are the people we really need to hear from, because you're actually at the forefront in terms of adoption and utilization of some of the technologies that are most dependent. And my concern, frankly, is that we're seeing 3D run, 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 but it's not actually tied to the reality of making garments, garments, which is my big financial risk when I'm trying to make things to body measure. So yeah, yeah, so do be aware that your avatar, even though you look good and what, Second Life. I don't know what other guys you're playing with. <laughs> oh, dude, that was a little bit. Yeah, I'm dating myself on that one. But um, anyway, Roblox. Roblox. <laughs> whatever is current, right, is not going to be an avatar that we can make garments from. They are distinctly different. So a lot of people are like, oh, I have an avatar. <laughs> yeah, not really. So, but they're, and they're distinctly different. And there's a range. And you have to understand that there's a range, right? Some of the avatars are just your hands, just your head, because they're representing you. And that's a definition of avatar, which is why we had to come up with humanoid. Because we're like, a humanoid, that's your hands and your head. Fought that's for you. six months over avatar. So yes. <laughs> humanoid. humanoid. Humans, humanoid. Nice. Covers, coveroids. Cover Everyone could pretty much agree on that. We yes. don't have, doesn't doesn't preclude any particular technology. Yeah, so you can call it the rest of it. Like digital twin and digital clone actually have a technical meaning on how you have set it up and how they are different. Yeah. So you have to bury down in. Um, and these are some of the papers that we have um, released. Free. So the landmarking, the position, uh, posture, and pose. And this uh, position, posture, and pose has just been released like March. So this is, this is hot off the press. And then the assets and definitions. Um, but literally, it took almost like two years to get that position paper. Because what we found is there was no agreement on what posture was. OK? Posture. Now, if you look it up in one dictionary, it's one definition. If you look it up in another dictionary, it's another, especially if English is your second language. You wouldn't get a complete definition of posture until you looked it up in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, and then from there, blah, blah, blah. So please look that over and understand, and she says, wrap up, ready for questions. So. <laughs> 
this is the last slide. So we're, all right, we made it time-wise. So ooh, ooh. any questions? Did I keep you awake before lunch? Was that, did that work? Okay. <laughs> Very detailed drill down. Do you have a question over here? Yes, Her yes. favorite topic. Her favorite topic. We actually do have, have a uh, footwear subgroup. Um, we have released a paper that's on that same website that you saw on um, the different um, definitions for the foot. We're working on a paper. We're almost wrapped up on the definitions for lass. And so that's another whole one that's taken like almost two years to go through. We have de a whole bunch of different suppliers. Um, the same thing, there are eight different definitions for the center line of your foot. So when somebody gives you that measurement, you have to know how they got it. And that's the real key. We're like, don't... Wait, I, I center don't... line is the waist of feet? Yes, uh. center line of your foot <laughs> is your waist of feet because you have to know whether you're doing the center line of the entire uh. width, whether you're doing it to the second toe, whether you're doing it at an angle, whether you're doing it from the center line, anyway, yeah, yeah. That's 2025. Um, because we've introduced cover and coveroid, uh, we had to, we're focusing on getting the body out Basic, the door. If you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, we're trying to get it graduated. And then once we do that, then yes, the next section of the standard is to go through all the covers because you have the covers, you have the soft physics, you have the animation, you have. But there are textile groups within IEEE already. Yes. So, so we, you can go ahead and start participating now because we will be Because we'll need with all them. that information anyway. So it's like, yes, we'd love to have somebody starting on that because that is the very ne that's next. Th that's next. Yes? I'm piggybacking on that question. Um, could you give us a high level of the roadmap in terms of the graduation of this? Since you started it like some years ago, and it, how would we adopt it globally? Well, the standard officially is, will probably come out in 2025. So what we have, I mean, we keep, <laughs> because it's an ocean, it's a rather big ocean, um, it's not, it's the Pacific, it's not the Atlantic. So um, what we've determined, and what we realize as we're doing this, is we had to go back and define what is a humanoid. You know, we had to go back and get some definite definitions so that when we bring that into the standard, because what we're able to do on the standard is literally reference the asset and transformation paper and say, this is it, right? Um, we can use that definitions. So there, there is a, there was a, a, an earlier draft and there's a working draft now. So if you're participating, you can actually jump yeah, in now. Yeah, you can actually see. Because, and, and, yeah, um, we've I've got been using them for my data labels to try to go back because we use a lot of different body measurements. And so what we were finding is that all of our scanning partners had different methodologies and labels. So we normalize that data to match closely to the IEEE. So our waste is defined as smallest width waste in the back end. So we know exactly where it's taken. So, and and, and uh, that may, that may, that is one waste, That's right? One. But <laughs> one waste, but at least we now, okay, we have one definition of waste. We can have another definition of, I mean, there are going to be multiple definitions of waste. Yeah, That's, you can pick one or three. You can pick one or you can state it, I'm using this one or that one. Okay, two minutes. Yes. Um, Yeah, so we are actually, um, if like, we have some of the people from that. Um, we didn't, I didn't put Kelly Varos in there, but we have people from that industry that are working on VRs and ARs and, oh, and all of that. Of so we have lots of, yeah. we are definitely cross-functional yeah. and they're like, well, why do you need, <laughs> you know? In, in fact, I would actually say that we're missing 
more pattern makers, more fashion production people. We're heavy on engineers, we're heavy on animation, we're heavy on people who are looking at this from different angles, much more startup be future focused and, and in the metaverse space. We really do need some fact checkers on the scene who are hardcore pattern makers and be like, yeah, that doesn't work, How right? Right. Yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah. and and we're and our whole point is, if I have metadata and I have a little thing on going gaming only, y you know not to use that avatar because you know eh, it might be that person, eh, it might yeah. not. But yeah. it's perfectly fine to go. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm in a game. Yeah. I I look close enough to like you. I'm good enough, right? Yeah. So we have those people already, which is why the quality has taken this long because they're like, I'm coming from VR and now I'm going to fashion, right? So you know, how to actually define. And so some of it was like, well, why can't we just have Y is up? Because fashion uses Y is up. I'm like, because Z started because everybody was making buildings and boats and Z is up on all of those. So, okay, we are done. So, um. <laughs> if you have more questions, let us know. And please so, join the, the groups. Yeah, so going to do, um, do whatever. Read the papers um, if you have you know, questions, whatever. Give You're, a copy to your engineers. Yeah, if you think uh, we're totally on left field, let us know. Um, because I really like people who go, what are you doing, right? Because then you get a response. And then if you meet the needs of both groups, then you're there, right? I'm not saying compromise. I'm saying we identify what you do do what you like, just let us know. Kind of like your mom, just let us know where you're going, when you're going to be in tonight. You know, that's all I want. Thank so, you so much. Thank you.